Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. All right, we had a project kind of last minute drop in our lap. I'm actually trying to get a bunch of this stuff done before I head out to West Michigan Hanami. This engine right here is the engine that comes in the 2008 or 2009 Acura TSX. It's a K20Z motor. That motor also comes in the Accord uh, from like 2008 up to 2013, and it comes in the 2012 to 2015 Civic Si. We haven't really been able to use these motors in swaps yet. I mean, it does make a great motor if you're swapping into a second or third gen fit. It would also make a good motor in a 20, I think 13 up CRZ. Otherwise, the big problem with this is the sensors are not the same. So the ECU that you wind up using with this is usually from that Accord, the TSX Accord or the Civic SI, and uh, it uses a totally different crank angle sensor and a totally different uh, cams. Uh, both cam sensors are totally different. Uh, normally, the crank angle sensor, I think, pulses about 24 times. On this particular one, it uh, pulses uh, 61 times plus another pulse as well. And basically, that's not really translatable to the older ECUs like the Honda or K Tuner ECUs. So, uh, the solution in the past has been to get something like um, an AEM Infinity, and that'll certainly work. But what I want to try and do is find something a little less expensive than that. So, we're going to try and experiment with this engine. We're actually going to mount it into our 96 Civic EK. Uh, it's uh, uh, kind of a sad looking car right now. It's been sitting out in the sun for the last, uh, gosh, I don't know, probably uh, eight years, maybe more, uh, since uh, FF Battle number four, I believe, when we had a J series in it. Uh, so it's just kind of languishing out there in the heat. Uh, it was actually a cover car for a sport compact car back in the day. It was the first car Hasport swapped a K24 in. We developed the uh, EKK1 and the EKK2 kit in that car. Um, so it's been with us uh, since uh, early 2000. This engine is going to go in that car and we're going to try a new ECU setup. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the old harness off. Uh, these are the ECU plugs on the current harness. Obviously, they're not going to work for the ECU we want to use. We want to use an older style K-Series ECU. Uh, but not only are these plugs different, some of the sensor plugs are different as well. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take this harness off. I'm going to annotate all the sensors that are different. Uh, get that information together so that we can uh, build a new harness for it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The very first plug we pull off is actually the alternator plug and it's different. So uh, that's kind of nuts. So we're going to have to, this is uh, similar to the O2 sensor plugs you'd find on uh, uh, some of the other, uh, some of the other cars. things we are going to be eliminating is the drive-by wire. Uh, I've got an Accord throttle body that I'm going to try on there and see if that works. If not, uh, we'll try some of the other throttle bodies as well. Um, I would imagine the Accord one works fine. They kind of standardize the throttle bodies. Not maybe there's a V6 one that works. Okay, so the only thing really different about the charge harness is the uh, plug that goes into the alternator. That looks very similar to one of the plugs that's on a uh, later model O2 sensor. It may not have the same keyways on it, but uh, uh, it's probably from the same generation, so I should be, able to, should be able to find one. At worst, I can just take this plug off and use it. Uh, I'm trying to keep the whole uh, harness in, in, um, uh, in one piece, though, and not really take parts off of it, that may not be possible. This solenoid actually operates the front motor mount. The front motor mount uh, has vacuum 
assist. It uh, stiffens and loosens depending on the shift. Obviously, we're not going to need that. The injector plugs are different. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to switch to the uh, older style injector or switch to the newer style plug. Um, I'll decide after I look at the specs on the newer injectors. The reverse light plug looks the same. The reverse lockout plug looks the same. The water temp sensor looks like it's the same as well. And the water temp sensor, actually it may be a little bit bigger. But anyway, it uh, is the same uh, model of plug. Uh, and then the water temp sensor is in the, the uh, upper radiator hose outlet, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see about our cam angle sensors. Well, they're the same style. Uh, I'm not sure if the keys are in the same place, but uh, those should work. This is our uh, countershaft speed sensor plug. Uh-oh, looks like the countershaft speed sensor is missing. We'll have to find a new one of those. All right, this is probably the most fascinating plug of the group. This is actually for the crank angle sensor. There is like an extension. This runs down here at the base of the block, and the crank angle sensor is actually in there. The, the reluctor, which is the ring that uh, spins, uh, is actually on the crankshaft, so it's not an easy job to switch it out to one that pulses less. That's one of the reasons we haven't messed with this uh, engine as a swap yet. Um, I suppose somebody might someday come along and make a reluctor that works properly, but that's actually probably not a viable solution. The reason is you have to disassemble the engine to change the reluctor. Uh, now, normally the reluctor sits on the timing chain side of the engine, but this doesn't have a, a provision for that. There's space on the crankshaft, in fact there's a spacer there, but there is no place to mount the sensor, so it wouldn't do you any good to put the, put the reluctor over there. The coil plugs are definitely different. so. Uh, I don't think it really matters which style coil I use, so I'll probably install, uh, or at least try to install the older style coil. Uh, that way I don't have to change all these plugs on the, uh, on the harness that we're going to be using. This is kind of the remaining uh, stuff on here. You've got the VTC, that looks like the same plug as before. Got the oil pressure sensor, which, by the way, this plug for Honda has been around since the 80s. <laughs> Uh, this is our uh, VTEC solenoid plug, and the only really different one is the oil pressure. Um, this is uh, kind of a newer style plug. Uh, and then this is the O2 sensor. I don't know if it's primary or secondary. The other one's over on this side. That doesn't really matter because we're going to be using a particular year O2 sensor, so what I'm not going to be using the, old, the, the sensors that came on this for that. Uh, the sensors, they're pretty standardized anyway. Um, you know, they all fit in the same hole, 14 millimeter by 150 hole. So I just need to get this off. Maybe I'll just take the whole bracket off. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the engine inside the car. We still have to do some work on the harness, but we wanna try and get some other things done. We wanna get the axles uh, hooked up. We wanna try to figure out the coolant lines and some of the other connections as well. Uh, most of the harness work is going to be done outside of the car actually. A little bit easier to get in there and do work. One of the things necessary in order to mount this in is this right here. This is Hasworth's Universal K-Series block bracket and it has multiple holes here and it works with a lot of different K-Series engines. On say for instance uh, a K20 it's going to use these two holes right here and the top of the slot right here will be the third hole. On a K24A it's going to use these two up here and the top part of the slot on the K24. But on this particular one, it uses the bottom edge of the slot. There's actually a little bit more space with this particular bolt hole right here. So uh, when we use it, we go ahead and put the spacer on the rear, up at the top, put it in position, and we have these three bolts, all the same size, that go in and then get threaded down. Now. There's on the normal block bracket, there's actually another hole right down here. 
and if it's on a 2012 Civic Si, there's another hole that's right around here some area. You need to actually put bolts in both those holes as well. They're part of holding the case, uh, the timing belt case, tied up against the um, uh, block. If you don't, you might wind up with an oil leak. But anyway, uh, once you get this on, just tighten it down, and that moves this in the right position. This is actually slightly farther back on this engine stock, so we'd have to design a whole new bracket. I didn't want to do that. Uh, although, we may still wind up doing that. Uh, but anyway, this allows us to use our existing mount kits with this engine, so we're just gonna slap this puppy on here. joints on them. Uh, usually people call them 36 millimeter because of the size of the nut on there is 36 millimeter. I'm not sure what size the spline is, but it's certainly not 36 millimeters. The other thing that's custom about this is the length of the shaft. Looks really short, doesn't it? The reason is we're using an Accord Intermediate shaft, which happens to be about two and a half inches longer than a normal RSX shaft. You cannot use a normal RSX uh, Intermediate shaft on these engines because there is an oil filter in the way. So, custom axle, available from Hasport. Get them while they're hot. Here's the difference in the two intermediate shafts. You see if we line them up, two and a half inches difference. That's what requires a shorter axle. Okay, we've got the engine in the car. We've got the axles in. We took our old wiring harness off. But now the real work begins. We got a bunch of stuff we got to do, little things, and there's just a whole long list of them. We've got our new wiring harness we need to build. We're gonna have to change some plugs on it, lengthen a few things so everything fits. But I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today. By the way, if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button down below. That way you'll get notified anytime we have a new video out. Plus, head on over to the VTechAcademy.com website. We have new black t-shirts. So if you like working on your car in your VTech Academy shirt, this one will stay cleaner. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for joining, joining us. We'll see you next time.